Well, good morning, New Life Church, and happy Easter. Well, it is week four of the world pandemic, and can you believe that we're actually spending it at home, quarantined on Easter Sunday? Wow, who would have believed that? But I'm so glad that you tuned in today, this morning, for this great service. I believe I've got a word for you today that's going to uplift your spirit and encourage your soul. So thank you for being part of the service today. Now, you already know this. I'm preaching to an empty building with empty pews. (laughs) And so I need your help. Just as we always do, sometimes we'll say amen or sometimes we'll clap out, you know, be clapping for something that we, we enjoy. So if I say something today that kind of hits your spirit, why don't you just hit the like button or, or make a comment? And listen, we've got people in the chat box uh, that are going to be responding to you today as we always do. So if you've got a question about the message, or if you've got a question about our church, feel free to ask a question today. Listen, if we don't know the answer, we'll just tell you, and we'll find out the answer, and we'll get back in touch with you. So we're so glad that you came this morning, uh, joining us online, and so let's get ready to get into the Word of God today. Uh, About 10 o'clock this morning, you should have gotten a notification through your push notification on your church app. And you can just look at that and download the notes for today's message so you can just follow along there and fill in the blanks. But I want you to take your Bibles with me today and turn to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. The Apostle Paul is writing to the, the church at Corinth. All right, so 1 Corinthians 15 is where we're going to be tuning in today. Before we start the message today, I want to pray for every that's tuning in, and I just want to pray for you and ask God to bless our time together today. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for every person that's watching me today, whether they're looking at me on their computer or on YouTube or Facebook or however it is they're tuning in, even those that'll tune in later in the, in, the, in the week. I pray for them right now as I begin to share the message. I pray for your anointing. Lord, to just somehow find its way through this camera right into their living room, and God, that you would speak to your people today. I pray that you would encourage. I pray for people that that are really searching for answers, especially during these difficult days that we're living in, and I pray that the Spirit of God would just move and have his way. I thank you for the unction to function in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, imagine this. Imagine that you woke up this morning and you turned on CNN or whatever news that you get your news from, and you turned on the the news, or, or maybe you even opened up your iPad and you began to look for news online, and the headlines from Jerusalem read, the body of Jesus has been discovered in Israel. Christianity is now in chaos. Let me ask you a question today. What would be the ramifications of the body of Jesus being discovered? What would that do to you? as a believer? What would be the aftermath to the church at large? You know, Billy Graham was being interviewed by Time Magazine years ago, and he told them this. He said, if I were an enemy of Christianity, I would aim right at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because that is the heart of Christianity. Friend, I want you to know something. Billy Graham was right. You see, the resurrection is the foundation by which our faith stands or falls. I want you to look at our text this morning, and let me, 
Let me put a little context into the text today. Understand that Paul is confronting a false teaching that was going around in the city of Corinth. And they were teaching that there is no such thing as the resurrection. And so Paul begins to to paint a gloomy and very negative picture of what it would be like to live in a world without Easter. You know, I... I heard them say the other day uh, in the, in the uh, briefing that they give every, every day, they're talking about, you know, uh, Pastor, you know, uh, some people say, did you know that, that the Easter service is, is canceled this year? That there's not going to be Easter this year? And, and, and the government has, has canceled Easter Sunday. And when I heard them started talking about that stuff, I thought about this scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, and I thought, what would it be like to live in a world without Easter? So, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and I want to read this to you in a modern translation of the Bible, just so that you can understand it. This is the New Living Translation, and it reads like this. This is the words of the Apostle Paul. He says, I want to remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news that I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried, he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. And then jump down to verse 12. But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, Why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. You see, what Paul is doing here is he is presenting a hypothetical argument, sort of a, you might say, a cause and effect hypothesis that if Easter really is canceled, in other words, if the resurrection is nothing more than fake news or a hoax, then Paul would say, okay, then we must be living in a world without Easter. Follow along with me today. The first thing that Paul tells us that if we really are living in a world without Easter, number one, we must forfeit our message. That's what Paul would say. In a world without Easter, we must forfeit our message. He says in verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless and your faith is useless. See, in a world without Easter, we must forfeit our message, Paul says, because our preaching is useless. Listen to this. If Jesus is a dead man and his body is still laying in a garden tomb, (laughs) then you are looking at the biggest fool in the world. Why? Because if Jesus is not risen, I would have wasted the last 30 years of my life preaching a message about a resurrected Lord that is false. I would have wasted four years in Bible college and 
three years in seminary. I would have wasted 30 years in ministry. I have thousands of books in my library that I need to take and throw on a junk pile. If Christ is not risen, every preacher that is preaching this Easter message is wasting their time, and they are frauds. If Christ has not been risen from the dead, not only am I wasting my time, but you are wasting your time. In fact, I wonder who the biggest fool really is. Is it me standing up here preaching to you? Or is it you sitting in your living room saying amen to a message that's not even true? Paul says, if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is useless. Actually, one translation says it is in vain. That word there in the Greek means purposeless or void of any meaning. Now, why would our preaching be void? Why would our preaching be useless? Because the entire gospel message hinges on the fact of whether or not Jesus rose from the dead. Friend, without the resurrection, you have no message. We would also not only have to forfeit our message because our preaching is useless, but because our witness is worthless. Look at verse 15. Paul says, we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection from the dead. Now look, many of you that are watching me today, you could simply testify and you could say that Jesus has changed your life. Some of us could could give a witness today about a personal relationship with Jesus. Others of us could talk about how we were once bound by drugs and alcohol and God set us free. Others of us could talk about how we were stuck in religious tradition and it wasn't until we came into a personal relationship with Jesus that our lives were changed. Others of us today, we could give a witness about how we were living in sin and we were living in immorality and Christ set us free. But listen, if you're one of those people and Jesus is still in the tomb, then you, friend, are a liar because Paul would call you a false witness. The word there is pseudomartis. It's a Greek term for someone who gives a false testimony in the court of law. Paul is saying you're committing spiritual perjury because you're running around telling everybody that Jesus has changed your life, he's set you free and given you power over sin when in fact nothing in your life has changed. Friend, if Jesus is not risen, then we must forfeit our message because our preaching is useless and our witness is worthless. What would it mean to live in a world without Easter? A world without Easter would mean not only must we forfeit our message, but listen to me, church, we must forget our mission. In a world without Easter, the church has no mission. In fact, I, I have to wonder, does anyone really even know what the mission of the church really is? Well, I'll tell you what it is, and it's true for every church. The mission of the church is the great commission of Jesus. Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 18 and 20, he says, listen, 
all authority. Listen, this is the resurrected Jesus. He's telling us all authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Go into all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, making disciples of them, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. But if Jesus is not risen, then we would have to forget our mission. Why? Because our faith is irrelevant. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 7, he says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is useless. Wow. Listen to that. Useless. That word means without results, irrelevant. See, what we have to understand is that faith is no greater than the object in which it is placed. I want you to think about that. Faith is no greater than the object in which it is placed. Now, you can have faith in all kinds of stuff, but faith is no greater than the object in which it is placed. I'll give you an example. I was uh, years ago as a youth pastor, I was teaching this principle about faith, and I asked the students in the class, I said, uh, How many of you have great faith? And a few of them raised their hand. In fact, there was one little there was one little arrogant boy, he raised his hand, he said, I've got faith, I can do anything. I said, Wow, you know, and so I thought, okay, well, let's see. I said, you know, Jesus walked on water. I said, let, 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 let's try this. And I, I set up two chairs about six feet apart from one another. And then I took a piece of cardboard and I put it between the, the chairs like a bridge. I said, all right. I think his name was James. I said, James, if you've got that much faith and you think you can walk on water like Jesus, I said, how about you do this? I'm going to have you walk across that cardboard, and if you've got faith, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't crash. So let's see how much faith you got. He, oh, yeah, I can do that. So he got up, started walking across the cardboard, and you know what happened. Crash. I mean, he just hit, hit the floor. So the principle that I was trying to get them to understand is faith is no greater than the object in which it is placed. Listen to me. There's a lot of religious talk out there today. Listen to me, young people. There's a lot of spiritual talk out there today that says, you know what? It doesn't matter what you believe. You just believe in anything or in anybody that you want. You know, all roads lead to God. But listen, I'm here to tell you, if you put your faith in the wrong object, it will not stand the test. Understand, what gives our faith credibility is the object in which it is placed. And Paul says, if Jesus is not risen, then our faith has no meaning. It is irrelevant and it is without results. We would have to forget our mission, not only because our faith is irrelevant, but we would have to forget our mission because our forgiveness is impossible. Uh, Paul says in verse 17, if Christ is not risen, you are still in your sins. An irrelevant faith produces unforgiven sin. If Jesus is still physically dead, then you and I are still spiritually dead. And forgiveness of sins are impossible. We are still in bondage. We're still wrapped in chains of defeat. We're still loaded down by guilt and condemnation of sin. Why? Because the thing that validates the cross of Christ is the resurrected Christ. Think about it. If Christ 
had not been raised from the dead, then everything he claimed to be is false. His birth is false. His healings and his miracles are false. His life is false. His death on the cross, they're all meaningless. Ah, but the resurrection gives validity to the claims of Christ and to the cross of Christ. Romans 4 and verse 25, Paul declares, He was delivered up because of our offenses. That has to do with the cross. But he was raised for our justification. Friend, I want you to know something. When Jesus came out of that tomb, it was the Father saying to a lost world, you can place your faith in my only begotten Son, Jesus, and you can trust him with your life because the resurrection validates the death of Jesus on the cross. And God calls every one of us who are believers to carry out the gospel message, to take the mission of the church into all the world and to preach the message that Jesus died, he was buried, and he was raised to give us new life. Hallelujah. But if on this Easter Sunday Christ is not risen, if we're living in a world without Easter, then we must forfeit our message and we must forget our mission. Last of all, what does it mean to live in a world without Easter? It would mean that we must forsake our ministry. If Christ is not risen, then you and I, we have no ministry to offer the living or the dying. You see, there would be no hope for the dead. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 18, if there is no resurrection, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. Let that sink in for a minute. That's a, that's a sad statement. They're lost. That would mean that death still has its sting and grave would still have its victory. And when we buried our loved ones, it wouldn't have mattered whether they lived a godly life. It wouldn't have mattered whether they knew Jesus or not because they're still lost. They've perished. They're gone forever. There would be no hope of a family reunion. We would never see them again. If Christ is not risen, we must forsake our ministry because there's no hope for the dead. We must forsake our ministry because there's no hope for the living. Verse 19, if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. Wow. Those are some sad words. Paul says, the most miserable people on planet Earth are the people who have a faith in a dead Jesus. Think about it. Why go through all of the stuff in life? Why go through all of the trials of life and the persecution and the, and the, mocki the mocking? And why go through all of the suffering and the heartache that life brings? If all there is, is this life only. Listen to what Paul says in verse 32. He says, if there is no resurrection, then let's eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow we die. If there is no hope for the dying and no hope for the living, Here's what he's saying. We might as well go out and get stone-cold drunk because there's nothing to live for. 
Paul would say, then let's go ahead and forfeit our message. Let's go ahead and forget our mission. Let's go ahead and forsake our ministry because in a world without Easter, there would be no hope. Ah, but I got good gospel news for you this morning. Don't tune me out just yet. Because the Bible says on the first day of the week, early Sunday morning, the followers of Jesus came to the tomb bringing spices to anoint his body. And when they got there, I love that, when they got there, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And they went in, and listen, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, two men stood by them in shining garments, and they said, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen just as he said hallelujah let me tell you something today church we must never forfeit our message our preaching is profitable your witness is worthy we must never forget our mission and we must never forsake our ministry because there is ministry and hope for the living and there's hope for the dying the old hymn says up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph or his foes he arose he arose hallelujah christ arose give him praise on your lazy boy today hallelujah glory to god i feel the anointing because he lives you can live also hallelujah Woo! glory to god you know it is amazing to think of the miracles in the Bible. It is an amazing thing to think of the miracle of the the virgin birth of Jesus. It is even more amazing to me that God would send his only begotten son, Jesus, to be crucified on a cross But none of those things have any meaning or significance if Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, listen to me, then Christianity is nothing more than just another religion. Nothing more than Buddhism. Nothing more than Islam. Nothing more than Hinduism. Now, I know it sounds old-fashioned, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. I can take you to the grave of Siddhartha Guantanamo. He is the founder of Buddhism. But you can walk into his grave, and there's nothing there but a bag of bones. I can take you to the grave of Muhammad the founder of Islam, and you can walk in and you can find his body laying there. But I can take you to the grave of Jesus of Nazareth. In fact, I've been there myself, and I've walked in, and I still haven't found a body yet. Why? Because he is risen. He is risen indeed. He's alive, just as he said. Somebody said we're canceling Easter. Friend, don't you believe it for a moment. You can't ever cancel Easter. Pilate could not stop him. Herod could not kill him. The grave could not hold him. Satan could not defeat him. Hallelujah. He's alive. He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he lives at the right hand of the Father with all power and authority today 
and he's interceding and praying for you right this moment. Hallelujah. Listen to me, friend. Listen real close. I want you to take just the next few moments and listen to me real close. I do believe it's not just a matter of faith. It's a matter of fact. Jesus died on the cross. They laid him in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And on the third day, he rose again. And that gives me hope eternal. Now listen, if God can save me, I believe he can save anybody. I believe that. You see, I, I, I'm, I, I was nothing more than an old nightclub singer. Some of you listening to me right now, you know that. You know my story. I traveled all over this tri-state area. I played in just about every bar there, there was. I don't think they even exist now, but in the mid-70s. I played in just about every bar around here, and I played the country music shows, and, and I wanted to live my own life. I wanted to be my own God. And one day, in fact, it was Easter Sunday, my parents invited me to their little church over Lakeview Assembly of God in Lake Milton, Ohio. And it was there that I heard a message like this, a message about Jesus and how he loved me and he gave his life for me. And he was risen again on the third day. And I heard that, and maybe like some of you are now, conviction came into my heart. That meant, conviction means God began to deal with my heart, that I knew I wasn't living for God. I really didn't know a whole lot about God, to be honest with you. And the preacher gave the altar call. He said, if anyone wants to know Christ, come to the altar. And friend, when he gave that altar call, I came to the altar and I knelt down on my knees and I simply, I simply said, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of all of my sins come into my heart and make me a brand new person and friend I want you to know as soon as I said that something on the inside of me just began to come alive you know what that's what happens that's that's the difference between Jesus and church religion Jesus begins on the inside and then he begins to work on the outside. Religion wants you to get your outside cleaned up before you can even be part of the church. Come on. Aren't you glad for a God that takes you right where you're at and he transforms you little by little, day by day? Friend, he'll do that for you. There's some of you listening to me right now. You need to do what I did some 35 years ago. Maybe you just need to bow your own heart while I'm speaking to you right now and you need to pray a prayer like that it's as simple as I call it ABC Lord I admit that I'm a sinner I was born in sin I I I, I need a savior I believe that you paid the price for my sin and that you rose again on the third day I, I repent of my sin I I turn from it and I I begin to live a new life following you I'm I'm not gonna be perfect but I'm gonna follow you and and then thirdly that C stands for confess Christ before men now obviously if we were in a packed house today I would ask you to get out of your seat come meet me here at the altar but I can't do that what I can do is encourage you to go to our website, scroll down to where it says, I'm new, and click right there. Fill out that Connect card and let us know that today, Easter Sunday, I rededicated my life to Christ or I gave my life to Christ for the first time or any other need that you may have. We want to minister to you today. 
And so I want to I wanna call you to, to the altar today. Would you pray this prayer with me? And just, just pray it right there in your living room, right there where you're watching me, and God will hear you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry that I have sinned against you, and I have even hurt others, and I ask you to forgive me. I believe you are the Son of God. I repent of sin, and I put my faith in you. And I believe that you'll save me. I believe that you'll give me a new heart in a new life. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer today, make sure you let somebody know. Maybe you're there with your husband. Maybe it's your wife, your children, whoever you are. Let us know. Let us know. Go to the website. Let us know, okay, so that we can help you. And I want to pray a blessing over everyone before we leave this great service today. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad you joined us. And I want you to just keep coming back and joining us each Sunday. Who knows how long we're going to have to do it like this. But thank God. Listen, we have a great team here at New Life. Our offices are open Monday through Thursday from 8.30 to 4.30. Anything that you may need, you call the church office. We want to help you. We want to pray for you. Uh, This coming Saturday, God's Warehouse, one of the largest food pantries in Youngstown, is going to be giving out food. If you need help with that, you let us know. We're here to help you, friend. We love you. I want to pray a blessing, and then we're going to let you go today. And I pray that you'll have the most blessed Easter ever. Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to bless our people today. I pray that you would visit every home. Father, if there are those that are listening to me today and they have somehow uh, contacted this virus, God, in their own life, I speak to that virus, God. And Lord, by the authority of the resurrected Jesus, Lord, we release healing to flow, O God, to those who need healing today. We pray for signs and wonders all across America today. Once again, we bless our doctors and our hospitals and grocery store workers and our EMTs and firemen and policemen, God. Everyone that's on the front lines, would you bless them today and keep them in good health. And Lord, we thank you that we were able to come together And Lord, we know that Easter can never be canceled because you are risen indeed. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name. All of God's people shouted in their own home. Come on, say it with me. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the sermon today. And before you leave, Would you subscribe to our page and check out our website? New Life exists to love God, lead people, and to live a better story. We sure hope to see you soon.